How do you take a crappy 100-year-old a house near the beach and turn it into a highly efficient, quiet, and healthy passive house? Stay tuned as we show you how. Let's take it away. How do we take an old house that really was never intended for energy efficiency or air tightness and is 100 years old and change it into a highly efficient, highly quiet, uh, very, very airtight house that protects indoor air quality? Well, it all starts on the outside. Now this house, if you remember, was unfortunately damaged in the giant uh, storms that we had in the 2022-2023 winter. In California, they were called atmospheric rivers. And while we were doing a small remodel on this project, these atmospheric rivers came and deluged this entire area with feet of water. When normally in a whole winter, we would get 18 to 20 inches in the Bay Area of California. To this year, we got close to 60 inches of rain. And unfortunately, with that rain came really powerful wind. And those wi that wind blew all the weatherproofing and waterproofing off of this house. And unfortunately, our windows were five months late. And so we didn't have any windows in the house and we didn't have a roof on the house and the house flooded. So we really kind of had to start from the beginning. And so really what we did was we thought about the entire project and we thought about how we were gonna make this house a much better house because we had to rebuild it than it would have been had we not had to do all this work. And it all starts on the outside. So if I open this front door, I show, I see that we have this adhero, which is this membrane that we use. It's a self-applied membrane. We've talked about that in previous videos, uh, not only at the, uh, this project, but also at the uh, Venkatesh project. And this self-adhesive uh, waterproofing and air barrier is really, really good at making sure that your house is airtight. Next, we talk about really highly uh, efficient airtight doors and windows. So this door is three inches thick and has an air seal that's much better than conventional front doors. It also has some uh, anchors that when you lock the door, actually pull the door into the uh, air barriers and make it, or to the gaskets, so that you make it much more airtight than a normal door. Next, we also talk about really highly efficient airtight windows. Now these windows were designed to the passive house standard. They cost about the same amount as a standard dual pane window, but they're three panes they have about two to two and a half times the R value, so they're two to th two and a half times more insulative than a standard two pane window. And they're about 10 times more airtight, which means that a tenth as much air leaks through this window and the frame as does a normal standard two pane window that you can buy in any place around in California or the rest of the country. When we start with these really good windows and these really good doors, we actually have solved a lot of the problems. Now, we also do a really good job of air sealing around those windows. And that air sealing also adds uh, waterproofing. So now we're not only developing a much more airtight window, but we're also developing a much more watertight window. So those windows are gonna exclude the water from this house much better than a window that was only intended to be flashed for uh, water itself. So that's super important because now we're adding a durability and a health component to the window flashing and it doesn't take that much longer and it really doesn't cost that much more. So it's really something that we do on all of our projects, but because it's that important. Next, we look at the bottoms of all these walls. So first of all, we've caulked and uh, foamed all of the bigger gaps in any material. We've also gone to the bottoms of all these walls and caulked not only the sheathing to the bottom plate, but the bottom plate to the subfloor. Now, this isn't actually the original subfloor in this house. As you'll see in the inserted picture, the original floor in this house was what's called skip sheeting. It's three quarter inch by five and a half inch planks that are put on a diagonal on the floor, uh, the floor joists. And they have a gap in between each one. And the idea of that gap was to allow the floor to breathe. But on a passive house, we don't want the floor to breathe. We don't want any of that to breathe. We wanna make sure that it's super airtight and it's also kept dry all the time. So those skip sheathed floors are actually really flimsy. And when you walk on them, you can actually feel them flex. So in order to stiffen those floors and make them a better 
substrate for hardwood floor or for tile, but also to make them airtight, we overlaid all those floors with a half inch plywood. Now this half inch plywood is glued and screwed down to the floors and to the floor joists. And then we tape all the seams in between all the plywood. Lastly, what we did is we went under this floor and we sprayed it with a foam. Now, even though we sprayed this floor underneath with a one inch layer of closed cell foam, that actually didn't stop all the air leakage. And what we ended up having to do was go around and do all the caulking all around the joints around the bottom of the wall, because that's where most of our air leakage came. We were actually really successful and we got this 100 year old house to meet passive house standards and actually get below the passive house standard. We should expect much better air quality, a much quieter house, a much longer lasting house, and a house that's going to be uh, comfortable to live in because we've reduced air drafts uh, of any sort in this house. If you're interested in learning more about building science or building projects to the passive house standard, please hit subscribe as we show you how to build a better way.